Very disappointing indeed, and these wide open spaces around Celtic Park reflecting the fact that the Celtic supporters appear to believe the championship race is beyond them. So Celtic can only afford to think of their own task this afternoon and forget events elsewhere, and particularly at Pitodre. Falkirk too have a very important task because they are clearly worried about relegation. They have a one-point advantage over Clyde Bank with a better goal difference, and they will be looking for something from today's match, if at all possible. And there's a good break for Falkirk. It's McGiven, and the opening goal for Falkirk. The first minute of the match, and Falkirk have snatched the lead. Sam McGiven gets the goal, which has set that small band of Falkirk supporters wild. Jim Kerr's free kick was head flicked on by Babti. McGiven sneaked in behind the Celtic central defence and touched the ball beyond Pat Bonner. A small clutch of Falkirk fans savouring the moment. Sam McGiven, who was signed from Kilmarnock for £35,000 earlier in the season, Certainly enjoyed that. Only his second goal for his new club. Celtic heading back very quickly. That's Johnston to Grant. And now it's Danny McGrain. The tackle came from Manley. Kerr and Dempsey. A misunderstanding, but it's back with Gordon Marshall. So Danny McGrain celebrated his 37th birthday yesterday. And I'm sure he would not have expected the match to start in such dramatic fashion. It's Kerr once again, looking for Edie through the middle. That's touched on by McStay, a chance for McAnally. He's being chased by Manley. And Marshall well out of his box. And a free kick's been given by the referee. He's going to have a word with the Falcon keeper. So it was Paul McStay who got the vital touch. McInally clearly onside, sprinting away with Manley in pursuit. He got the ball first, but Marshall brought him down. ED beaten by McGugan. Before the start of this afternoon's match, the entire 11 players in the Falkirk side had mustered only 14 goals among them this season. Compare that to the 69 goal striking partnership. Up front, uh, the header goes wide. A good effort, though, again from Falkirk. So this cross ball eventually causing problems for the Celtic defence. Again, the wind is treacherous. Played in by Ian McLeod, Bond and caught in two minds, and the header from Heatherston goes wide. A rather hopeful ball that from Derek White. No one forward on the left for Celtic. So the hustling tactics of Falkirk for the moment paying off. Celtic unable to get any pattern into their build-up play. And there's ED getting away from the Guggen. He has the pace. Another chance for Falkirk. Down goes ED, and the referee weighs play on. ED clearly thinks he was fouled. He appeared to have the legs of Paul McGugan. We'll see from this, the ball is played forward. ED gets in behind McGugan. He appeared to have enough pace, but he couldn't get across the bows of the Celtic centre half. And as the players tangled, the referee sees nothing of this. Mother McLeod. There's Grant. Ball bubbling awkwardly in that bare patch in the middle of the field. You can see the wear and tear on the playing surface this afternoon. The rainfall has certainly helped. Still no joy for David Hay and Tommy Craig on the Celtic bench. Bapti to ED. A fine effort by ED. A superb shot by Ken Eady on the run. Now that could certainly have been a real shaker for Celtic. It's a good pass forward, this. Bap deflating it. Controlled in the chest by ED, And the volley goes just wide of the target. And the cloud. Now Stewart. Turn the pace again, followed by Aiken. That's for 
BD to chase. Derek White has things under control for Celtic at the back. Two headers from McAnally. Manley's there for Falkirk. Good turn of speed by Jim Kerr to get there ahead of McLear. And Celtic will be most anxious to get back in terms before half time. Here's McLear, return pass from McStay, great chance for Celtic. Well, not the deadly Brian McLear, who's been in evidence so much this season. Superb interplay here between McLear and Paul McStay. McLear in position, the ball appeared to bubble as he struck it. He's in a good marking job in midfield for Falkirk. Aiken, that's towards McClare. Peter Grant, there's Johnston, and Marshall makes two splendid saves for Falkirk. The danger now cleared by Rav Stewart, but that's the closest that Celtic have come. And Gordon Marshall this time allowing the ball to go behind calmly. But that was certainly the nearest to a goal from Celtic in the first half. It started with the throw on the left. Back it went to Roy Aiken. Now there's good play here from McClare, screening the ball back to Grant, the driven shot, well saved by Marshall. And he was very quick to get to that effort from Mo Johnston. Aiken came off Manley, straight to McAnally. McAnally going all the way himself to the byline. Ryan McClare is there, nodding it down. It came off the thigh of Ian McLeod. That's caught Sam McGivern on the wrong foot. And McLeod is onside if he can reach the ball in time. The wind's carrying the ball away. And good play from Martin McLeod, very determined. Feels the handball waved aside by Riffy Hope. was right on the spot to judge that. Struck Peter Heatherston. Riffy Douglas Hope was in no doubt at all. It was fair. Well, I think these appeals are more out of hope than expectation. McLeod playing it in. It struck Heatherston around the left side of the chest. The header by Edie. Aiken nodding it on. We're into time. I did on for stoppages now in the first half. It looks as though Falkirk will see out the first half with that lead conjured up by Sam McGivern in the first minute. And that will certainly send shockwaves through the country as the half-time scores are communicated in other grounds. And there goes the half-time whistle. David Hay departs up the tunnel, boos and whistles around the stadium. Celtic going in a goal behind and it all happened in the opening minute. A free kick taken by Jim Kerr. Flicked on in the air by Crawford Bapti. McGivern was quick to go in behind the Celtic defence and touch the ball beyond Pat Bonner. So that is the goal which gives this shock scoreline at Celtic Park. It's Celtic nil, Falkirk 1. Well, I discovered juggling Janet in this dingy little bar. I said, let me be your agent, love. I'll make you a megastar. Well, I've got contacts, haven't I? So I got her booked in a place with class. The governor seemed well pleased. And when I took the normal agent's fee, I was laughing all the way to the league. Well, I got me overheads to consider, haven't I? See, I got an account called Liquid Gold. Now, I know that sounds quite funny, but it means the Leeds takes your proceeds and adds on extra money. I was quids in with the Leeds. But then she cries, your fee's too high. It's more than all the others. I said, who told you that, my dear? She said, oh, my little brothers. 
Nice Boys gave me a lift to the Leeds. Well, you can get your wedge out instantly if you have an urgent yearning. And even if it's not there long, you know it's still been earning. Liquid Gold now pays up to 7 and 3 quarter percent for bigger savers, so laugh all the way to the Leeds. We're the top people for industrial and commercial property. All sorts of people come to property marketing. We have the top properties for all sorts of businesses, all over Scotland, all under one roof. We'll take you up so high, straight to the top properties Property marketing. Go straight to the top. Free phone SDA. It's so easy, nice and easy to own a from Laidlaw. Extra easy with Laidlaw's low interest double act. At just 2.5% APR 4.8, Laidlaw spotlights Britain's top selling duo Fiesta and Escort. Laidlaw. At £15, that's a mere third of the full price. An adult season ticket for the 1988 Glasgow Garden Festival is an unbelievable bargain. Because everything there will be out of this world. Apart from the phenomenal flowers, there'll be an endless galaxy of entertainment. Thrill rides for kids. Fashion shows for mum. Sports displays for dad. It'll all be like nothing on earth. <laughs> and it'll be perfect for all the family, not just the green-fingered. So buy a bargain that's out of this world. around the stadium during the interval and when the Celtic team came out Tommy Burns was with them he has replaced Paul McGugan in the Celtic lineup and he certainly got a rousing welcome from the home supporters there to add some creative talent to the Celtic effort uh, McLeod Burns wants it back Paul McStay that's good play from McStay changed direction quickly kept control of the ball and he has Johnston on the right over towards McAnally, now McStay. And the ball bounced just too high for Paul McStay. Good build up this though. Mo Johnston flighting it across. McAnally nodding it down. Controlled in the chest by McStay. Then bounced just a shade too high. Another on by Manley. Tommy Burns sprinting across. McStay, back to McAnally. There's McClear rather coming forward. Brian McClear shot. Frustration again for the ace striker. But well set up. McClear's strength carrying him past that challenge. Lining up the right foot shot. Kept it down well, but Marshall's positioning was good. Dempsey again, and it's White forcing it into midfield for Tommy Barnes. Never quite so comfortable on the right, his Burns, but that's a good pass to Johnston. No McStay, followed by Kerr. And diligent defending by the Falkirk fullback. Bacon was fouled by Bapti. This is Paul McStay. The out swinging cross, up goes McAnally, it comes for Burns, off the line by Heatherston. It was a splendid effort that by Tommy Burns. He certainly was out of luck. But it's still with Celtic and Paul McStay, tackled by Edie. Well, this was certainly a good move from Celtic. It was Paul McStay who took the short free kick, flighted it across, uh, an intelligent header down by McAnally. Now you can see Burns tried to steer that into the top corner, but Heatherston was there. Up goes McAnally again, and that's a Falkirk goal kick.
No one there in the middle for Falkirk as Heatherston plays it in. That appeared to be handball, but it was because of a push by McGivern. There's McGrain, now Johnston. Grant, no room to work. Hustled by Stewart, did well to find Aiken inside. Johnston on the right. The cross came off Kerr, and the referee decides, I think, that that was handball. Did he? Is he giving a free kick at the edge of the box? Yes. No, he's changing that to a penalty kick on the advice of the near side linesman. Well, that certainly is controversial. So penalty kick's been given. Peter Grant was who worked the ball inside. A good pass this from Aiken. It goes to Johnston. Uh, Jim Kerr at the edge of the box. It appeared to be outside the box when that struck his hands. But a penalty kick has been given. Linesman, Mr. Maguire from Hamilton, clearly influenced the referee's decision. So Brian McClare looking for goal number 41 for the season. No mistake. One hour of the match gone. And some trouble inside the goal net. As Celtic tried to retrieve the ball quickly, Jim Dempsey was making things awkward for them. But the equaliser from the right boot of Brian McClare from the penalty spot. Driven beyond Gordon Marshall. Celtic are back on terms, but they owe a great debt, I think, to Dame Fortune for that. Controlled by White, but only for Heatherston, who took a knock from Tommy Barnes. Here's Edie. Edie going across for the shot, and good play again from the Falkirk striker. Lots of pace and mobility up front. Now he controls this well to make space for himself, coming inside on his left foot, going right along the 18-yard line, turning for the shot, which was rising over the top. Substitution for Falker gets Albert Kidd coming on. Remember his impact on the last day of last season when he scored the two goals for Dundee, which lost the championship for Hearts. Here's Danny McGrain. A point, of course, no use to Celtic. If they are to reach it, any lingering hope of the championship. McGee's shot is blocked, spinning away to the far side. McLeod escorts it behind, and it's a corner kick to Celtic. Well won by Bakhti above everyone else to clear that. McGrain, Johnston. Shot to Burns. Now Grant. McGee with a return, still Peter Grant. Oh, that's McDermott's in play from Celtic. Also good defending by Falkirk, reacting to Peter Grant, trying to create a position for himself. And Albert Kidd prevents the corner, conceding a throw right at the corner flag. Pressure now relentless from Celtic. Here's Barnes. Careless one, swept away by McGivern. And McGrain sends it towards Bonner, not with too much conviction. Derek White takes over. Barnes takes it away from Kidd. And that's a free kick all right. Quickly taken by Grant. Johnston waits for McGrain to go in the overlap. Just turns the clock back a few years. Danny McGrain in the attack. McGee, lucky to get a second chance, making for the byline and winning the corner kick off Manley. So a substitution has been made for Falkirk. Ken Eady has gone off. Jimmy Gilmer has come on. Grant returns it to Barnes. missed it right in front of goal it was flicked on to him by McStay and Roy Aiken just couldn't react quickly enough played in by Burns initially clearing header by Nicol chested down by Grant back it comes 
to Tommy Barnes. Now you'll see Paul McStay gets a touch. It's there for Aiken. He couldn't direct it on target. Headed by White. His new opponent is Jimmy Gilmer. A little number 12 for Falkirk. Replacing Ken Eady. He ran himself into the ground and earned a rest before the finish. Here's Gilmer. A determined to lose a little player. And it's in, it's a goal from Gilmer. Jimmy Gilmer has scored for Falkirk. Four minutes from time. And that is really unbelievable. The Falkirk fans celebrate by just look at this again. Little Jimmy Gilmer takes the ball from the throw, turns away from White, fights through that challenge from Tommy Burns, gets away from Paul McStay, and the shot bounces awkwardly right in front of Pat Bonner, and Falkirk have taken the lead. Well, Jimmy Gilmer has been on just about three minutes, his first real involvement in the play, and Celtic are 2-1 down, and it's now all over ball the shouting I fancy for the championship, and the Celtic fans clearly agree with that. But into time, and he run for stoppages as Aiken lofts it in. McClure trying to turn, it's swept away by Dempsey. And there goes the final whistle. Falkirk are the winners. Their Premier Division status enhanced. But Celtic losing not only their proud 18-month-old league record, but going out of the championship race, leaving the field clear for Rangers. And angry fans now gesticulating towards the Celtic players. The contrast, though, for the Falkirk players, now surely assured of Premier League status for next season, and a performance from them full of courage, determination, and organisation. So they are undoubtedly the heroes of the day as Celtic depart meekly to the dressing room. It's Celtic 1, Falkirk 2. What a